sticking from a long ways away with these things. Huh, that's really cool. Yep, seeing some corn waving. No crocodiles. Pretty impressive. Tim got to see crocodiles. Where else I can see? Oh, oh, sorry. Didn't know you were with me yet. Just checking out those binoculars, seeing what I could see. I hope you guys enjoyed our time yesterday with Christy and Tommy, Miss Tanya, Miss Courtney. And of course, Kellen teaching our lesson. They do a great job and, and uh, they're men and women who love God too. That's one of the cool things about God is he not only tells us to focus on him, but he gives us this different things to help us focus on him, right? Like he gives us godly men and women. He's given us his word. And he's given us creation like we talked about on Sunday. So, you know one really cool thing about God? is that the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, 8, God speaking to Isaiah and he says, my ways are not your ways. My, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Isn't that good to know that there's this big being out there that loves us so much and has a better plan in store for us that we can trust in him, that we don't have to focus on the things that are in this world, some of the hard things and the tough things, we can focus on a God who has something better for us, not just while we're on this earth, but while we live with him in eternity. Those are some really cool attributes of God. It's always great to know that God helps us focus, right? And what is focusing? It's taking a closer look at things. It's helping us to turn our eyes from things that don't really matter to the things that do matter. So we're going to go find my crazy cousin, Taurus Tim again. See where he's at this time. I'm sure he's got some great stories, some great words of wisdom. We'll hit up Kel Kellen, see what he has to say, and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Yeah, you want another picture over there too, yeah? All right, all right. Hey, yo, good to see you too, buddy. How you doing? Looking good, my friend, and all green. I like those new tights, yeah. Hey, oh, welcome back, kids. It's me, Taurus Tim, Chad's crazy cousin. Today, if you couldn't tell from my accent, some type of northern accent, I'm in the North Pole. The North Pole, Alaska, that is. Did you know that's an actual city there? Yeah, I have a good friend, as does Chad. Her dad's the mayor of the North Pole. Perhaps he even knows a jolly old elf. I don't know. Could be. What we're going to talk about today is talking with others about what you believe. That's a very important thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And there's different ways we can express ourselves when we're talking, right? We can maybe start with this, which is where a lot of people start when they're wondering about Jesus. They start with a question. They start with, hmm, who is Jesus? And they begin to search and seek out. And they look at facts, right? Questions would end with a question mark, like this one. Yeah, then we start seeking out facts, right? Facts, they would end with a statement. What do statements end with? Something that's just a straight fact. Right, a period. That just says, this is true. And then when we're excited about something, like celebrating Christmas in July, what do we say? We end it with an exclamation point. Well, we're going to talk about a lesson today in Matthew 16. We're going to find our Bibles and pull them out. Matthew 16. It's Matthew 16, 
verses 13 through 16. And this is a question that Jesus is asking his friend Peter. He actually is asking all his friends that are around him at the time. He says, Jesus came to the region, the certain place, and he asked his, asked his disciples, he says, Who do people say the Son of Man is? There's that question, right? Who do people say I am? The Son of Man is something Jesus would call himself. So he's saying, who do, you, who do people say that I am? And then his disciples said these things. He said, some of you say they're this person, John the Baptist. Others purpose of people would say that you're Elijah, an, an old prophet. And others would say Jeremiah, another prophet. Then Jesus asked this question, and it's a very important question for you to ask. He says, but who do you say I am? What about you? Who do you say I am? And then Peter is a very bold person. Oftentimes, his tongue would get him in trouble. But in this instance, he decided to speak up and he spoke something very powerful. He says this, Simon Peter answered, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. A very strong fact, right? Yeah. So he has a very strong fact of you are the Son of God, the Christ, the Messiah. And on that, we can exclaim that Jesus is King, that He has come for us. And now we get to do that through song and worship. Let's go and praise God, putting an exclamation point on what we have to say to Him, thanking Him that He is the Messiah in Christ, and He is our Father in God, and He has sent His Spirit to be with us. Let's go celebrate and rejoice and worship. <laughs> This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I fix my eyes on you This is my focus, all of my days, I know where my hope is, I'm living life, I shot the chorus, because I know, oh, you're always for us, and even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, believe, and even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, and keep on looking.
Welcome back, kids. There you are. So, we are thankful that we get a worship the Lord in song. And the reason why Christmas is one of my favorite times is because I know that Jesus is the Messiah. He came to earth, and all the traditions that surround it, the trees, the lights, they all represent him. And so every Christmas, I get to see Jesus and be reminded of Jesus because of the things around me. And I get to tell people about Jesus. You can talk with others about what you believe, and that's very important because they may not know unless they hear the words from your mouth. So we're going to go hear our lesson today from our good friend, Kellen. Thank you for worshiping. Please pay attention in our next time of honoring God with learning about him. All right, take it away, Kellen. Yeah. Not seeing it. Uh, maybe if you turn it sideways. Uh, nope. Oh, hey, Kellen here, and I'm looking at an optical illusion. If you look at it a certain way, you're supposed to see a 3D picture pop out. Here, see if you can see it. Do you see it? Hey, it's a dragon eating a donut. No, it's a baseball player using a rubber chicken as a bat. It's just a bird! A normal bird! Yeah, I still don't see it. Okay, but I also have this one here. This is cool. So the lines look like they're moving, but they're actually not. It's playing a trick on our eyes. The way these lines are put together gives them the illusion of movement. Crazy, right? We've been talking this week about taking a closer look at what's around us. When we're taking a closer look, maybe we can see things that we hadn't seen before, or maybe we can see things in a new way. Our Bible story today is asking us to take a closer look into who Jesus is. We're in the book of Matthew, and when we pick up the story in chapter 16, Jesus has already been on the scene for a while. 
and people are wondering, who is this guy? He's doing miracles. He's feeding the poor. He's hanging out with all kinds of people the rest of the world look down on. He's teaching new things. Who is he exactly? So we read that Jesus was walking down the road and he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? His disciples turned to each other and they didn't answer for themselves. They told him what other people were saying. They told him, some say you're John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. That's what the disciples said. But let's say you ask people today, who is Jesus? You would probably hear a lot of different things too. Maybe some would say, he's a great teacher. Some people might say he's a great rabbi or preacher. People might see how he healed the sick and call him a doctor. People might say Jesus is love, that he is the light of the world, that he is a shepherd for his people. People have a lot of different thoughts about who Jesus is. But let's go back to the story now. His disciples had given him answers of what others were saying, but then Jesus asked his disciples, but what about you? Who do you say I am? I wonder if the disciples were scared here. They were put on the spot. Maybe they didn't know exactly who Jesus is, or maybe they didn't want to say what they thought. But here, Jesus was asking them point blank, who do you say that I am? They had to answer for themselves. But then, after a moment, Peter spoke up. He too might have been scared or unsure, but he said this, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Now, Jesus is many of those things we listed, but Peter recognized he is so much more. And here's the thing, you're invited to recognize the same thing. If you see that Jesus is the Messiah and ask him to be a part of your life, he can and he will continue to change your life forever. Now, Jesus went on to tell Peter that his answer was revealed to him by God and that Peter will be the rock that he would build the church on. Now, here's the thing about Peter. He wasn't perfect. He said some pretty wild things and made some pretty big mistakes, but he was honest and he wasn't scared to say what he was thinking or ask questions of Jesus or other people. Peter took a closer look at Jesus. He saw the way Jesus loved, the way he taught, the way he changed the world. Peter realized Jesus is the Messiah. We can learn a lot by being honest and asking questions just like Peter. You can talk with people about what you believe, especially talk with people in your life that you can trust, like your parents or your small group leaders. The more you talk about what you believe, the more you can learn from others and the more others can learn from you. That's it for today. I'll see you guys soon as we continue to take a closer look. Wow, that was some great stuff we learned today, wasn't it? Who do you say I am? It's a very important question for all of us when Jesus asks not only his disciples, but we can see that he is asking us that as well in his teachings and in the teachings of his followers that have been handed down to us through the Bible. Who do you say I am? Hmm. Well, if someone asked me that, I'd say, Jesus is the Messiah just like Peter said, that he is indeed the Son of God and he's come to save his people. And I know that if you dive in and focus on the Bible and read what it says and listen to it, you'll come to that same conclusion too. So this is night number three, Tuesday night. We're moving fast through this week. I hope you guys have had a great time. Tonight we're going to be pulling out these uh, pink bags uh, Tuesday night three. That's the ones we're going to be using. So I hope you guys uh, find some good stuff in here and you really enjoy the next few minutes. So we'll give again, give a little bit of a pause for your parents to find some of the supplies they might need if they haven't already. I hope you guys can get into it and enjoy your crafts and those types of things tonight. Tomorrow night we'll be doing the same thing. So that will be Wednesday night, night four. We'll be jumping back to our friends, Christy, Tommy, Miss Tanya, and Miss Courtney. And, and I will see you on our last night, Thursday night, for night number five. So, toodaloo. Welcome to day three, Snacks with Ramona. Today we learned that Peter declared that Jesus is the Messiah. Today your snack 
is Cracker Jacks. It will be in the pink bag stating day three and a little information packet for you. As you enjoy your snack, would you share something you have learned so far this week? This week, we have been learning about the things we can focus on when it comes to our faith. You can focus on what we see that God has made. You can hear from God through his word, the Bible, and you can talk with others about what you believe. Maybe something you have learned can help someone else. Talking about your faith is one important way to help you grow. Hey guys, it's me, Miles, and I'm back with Day 3 Crafts. For today's craft, you'll need the Pink Tuesday Day 3 bag and the instruction sheet. Previously, I know you guys have used some crayons. If you don't have these, then you can use, like, whatever. So, what, I, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, color this color wheel in. I'm going to call mine the star spinner. So, because mine has a star, kind of. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to just take our crayons. It's super simple. All you have to do, take your crayons or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to use to color them, and you just color it in. So, I'll color it in right now. Okay, now we're done coloring. So, now, you can take out these stickers. And they say our bottom line, which is, you can talk with others about what you believe. And you can stick these on your spinner. You can stick them on your shirt. Um, you could stick them wherever you're allowed to. Just use them as a reminder that you can tell anyone about your belief in Jesus. So, I'm going to stick one on my spinner. And let's stick one on my shirt, too. Actually, how about my nose? There we go. Okay. So, now we're going to show you what the spinner does. We're going to take it so it's about halfway, like this. So, this, make the spinner halfway in between. And you're just going to twist it up bunch like this okay and you're just going to release it and see look at that see so now it spins like that see they're pretty cool so yeah that's our craft for today i'm miles and i have a sticker on my nose guys welcome back to steam today we're going to be making cyborg chalk paint so what you're going to need from home is cornstarch water and some cups or like little bowls or muffin tins or anything that you can kind of separate into different colors and you'll also need food coloring and then in your kit you should also have a paintbrush all right so we're going to mix one cup of cornstarch with one cup of water And you can separate this into as many different colors as you want. I'm just going to do four. All right. And then once you get all your food coloring mixed in, this is what you should have. I just have a couple different colors here. And then you can take your paintbrush and you can paint on your sidewalk or driveway. And you can do whatever you want. Today's bottom line is to talk with others about what you believe by drawing pictures and writing notes about Jesus on your sidewalks and driveways. So one thing you can do is write something like, Jesus loves you. Or if someone walks by while you're drawing and says, hey, what are you drawing? That looks pretty cool. You can talk to them about what you learned today. And it's just one way that we can show love to our neighbors and our friends and families. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today. And I will see you again next time. 
Welcome to Games Night 3. I'm so excited for this game. I think you will love it. We're going to t play the telephone game. Okay, so what you need at home is two objects to run around. We've got cones and you need your family, which I've got. Hi, family. Yes. Okay, so we've given you some phrases or you can make up your own, but I'm going to whisper a phrase in the first person ears, that's Katia. Katia is going to run as fast as she can around the cones, and then she's going to whisper it to the next person, who's actually Karina. And then we're going to repeat till we get to the very end, and then the end person is gonna say the phrase, and we're going to see if how close we are. Sound like fun? Here we go. What did, what did Raylan whisper in your ear? Just do the best you can. It's okay if you didn't hear. Do you know? All right, Raylan, what did you whisper in Kinley's ear? A pig in a basket. A pig in a basket. And oh my friends, that was so wrong. He only got one word. Do you want to know what it was? It was a pink pig and a pesky donkey flew a kite at night. I hope you have fun playing with your family. See you tomorrow.